just want, we just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One more time, we just want to thank you. We just want to thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you. We just want to thank you. Oh, we just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Beloved, the Lord is good and his goodness will continue to remain. The Lord has been good to us. If we look at all that is going on around the world, we see that the Lord has been good. Hallelujah. He has protected you. He has guided you. He has watched over you. And so today is not just any common day, but today is a special day the Lord has made for you to just give thanks to him. Hallelujah. And today happens to be the first week in the last month of the year. The Lord has been good to you. What else do you want the Lord to do for you? And so wherever you are, I just want you to join us today in this service. Let us thank God. Let us give God all the glory. Let us give God all the praise. Let us give God all the adoration. He's worthy of our praise and he's worthy of thanksgiving. And so wherever you are, in your car, in your bedroom, in your living room, wherever you find yourself, just join us with one accord as we thank God this morning. Hallelujah. What can I offer to you, O oh God, for your grace has taken me through? I bring a sacrifice of praise, for your grace has done it again. Yes. Your grace has taken us through, oh God, your grace has done it again, gracious God, we bow down to you, gracious God, we bow down to you, what shall we offer, what can I offer to you? Oh God, for your grace has taken me through. I'll bring a sacrifice unto you this morning. I bring a sacrifice of praise for your grace has done it again. Come on, wherever you are, let's proclaim. Your grace has taken us through. Oh, your grace has done it. Gracious Lord, gracious God, we bow down to you. Ooh, gracious Lord, we bow down. Your grace, your grace has taken us through. Oh, Lord, your grace has done it. Gracious Lord, we bow. Gracious Lord, we bow to you. Your grace, your grace, your grace, sing. Your grace has taken us through. Oh, your grace has done it again. Gracious Lord, gracious Lord. We bow to you, gracious Lord, we bow. Gracious Lord, gracious Lord. Gracious Lord, we bow to you, gracious Lord. Let us begin to thank God. Let us begin to give him all the glory. Father, we bless your name. We give you glory. We thank you this morning for our lives. You've been good to us, oh God. You've been good to your church. We thank you for the life you've given to us. We thank you for the breath you've given to us. We honor your holy name this morning, O oh God. You have watched over us, Lord. You have watched over our families. You have watched over the church. You have watched over your people.
you have protected us even in these times even in this dispensation that people find themselves troubled you have been a God you have kept us you have held us you have protected us Lord we thank you this morning we say glory be unto your name we say honor be unto your name we say praise be unto your name we appreciate everything you've done for us Lord we say thank you this morning hallelujah I want us to continue to pray and then commit this morning's service into the hands of the Lord. Let us invite the presence of God to come and take control over whatever we do. We are asking that God's presence will fill this place. God's presence will fill every room that is watching us virtually. That the Lord who is able to manifest in various ways will manifest and show himself great in today's service. Let us pray and commit the service into the hands of God. Let us pray. Father, we continue to pray at this moment. And then we commit this morning's service into your hands, Lord. We ask that, Father, you will take absolute control, Lord. May your presence fill this place, Lord. May your presence fill this place, Lord. May your presence take control, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit will come and chair and manage and control every activity in this room. We are asking for your presence, oh God. Fill us, oh God, and fill this place, oh God. And in the end, glory and honor shall be given unto you. And we trust in you, oh God, and we believe that you have come and you have come to stay. And so, Lord, walk with us, even in this service, oh God, whoever is watching us in our homes, in our various places, we are inviting you, God. Lord, to come and take absolute charge of oh God. May you feel the atmosphere, Lord. May you feel the atmosphere virtually, Lord. And may your presence continue to take place in the name of Jesus. Your grace has taken us through. Oh God, your grace has done it again. Oh gracious Lord, we bow down to you, Ooh, gracious Lord, we bow down, gracious Lord, we bow down to you, Ooh, gracious Lord, we bow down to Father, we bless your mighty name this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for a wonderful day like this. Indeed, this is the day that you have made and we need to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the lives that you have given to us. We thank you for the life of this church. We thank you for the lives of our families. We thank you for everybody watching us, Lord. You are a grateful God. You have kept your promise, Lord. Despite all these troubles that the world is going through, all the pandemics and everything, you have kept your promise, Lord. Indeed, your promise are yea and amen. We thank you this morning. We pray and commit this morning's service into your hands, Lord. We pray that, Father, you would come and take absolute control. May your presence fill this room, Lord. Take absolute control over whatever we will do, Lord. And in the end, glory and honor shall be given unto your name. We bless your name. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So today is a special Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. And we want to sing songs about the blood because today is a communion Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to reflect on the goodness of God. Amen. Nobody would lay down his life just like that for you except God. Hallelujah. And so we need to be thankful wherever you are. I just want you to ponder on these songs as we sing them. I just want you to meditate on them. If it's possible for you to pray, pray. And then be grateful. Appreciate what the Lord has done for you. His love for you is awesome. He has set us free by the blood. Hallelujah. And so before we sing some songs, I just want to quickly read this quick Bible verse. Matthew chapter 27. Verse 32 talks about the crucifixion of Jesus. Matthew 27, verse 32. It says, As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, 
But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. 28, sorry, 38. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Beloved, before we sing these songs, I just want you to understand something. History tells us that in the Ashanti kingdom, there was this man known as a Konfanochi. Now, this man promised his people that he was going to look for an antidote to death so that human beings would not die anymore. And so he said that when he leaves, people around him should make sure they don't cry. And that is the way that he will be able to come back and then bring this antidote of life to people. But unfortunately, this priest I'm talking about, who is very popular in the Ashanti kingdom, went and could not come back. In fact, death was able to conquer him. But we are talking this morning about a man, Jesus, who died and assured his people that, look, on the third day, I will rise up. And the scriptures makes us to understand that when he died, he resurrected on the third day. Hallelujah. And so death could not hold him captive. Death could not hold him captive. So I love this song so much. It says, He deserves glory. He deserves glory. Come and behold Jesus Christ. He deserves glory. Death and Hades could not hold him captive. Oh, hallelujah, he deserves glory. Death and Hades could not hold him captive. Oh, hallelujah, he deserves glory. He deserves glory, say, he deserves glory. He deserves glory. Come and behold Jesus Christ. He deserves glory. Death and Hades could not hold him captive. Oh, hallelujah. 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 He deserves death and Hades. Death and Hades could not hold him. Oh, hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! It is, it is as glory. It is as, it is as glory. Come and behold Jesus Christ. Come and behold Jesus Christ. It is. Death and Hades, death and Hades, could not hold him. Oh, hallelujah! Hey. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Death and Hades, death and could not, could not hold him. Captive. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He deserves glory. He deserves glory. Come and behold him. Come and behold Jesus Christ. He deserves death and hate. Is there could not hold him captive? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am free. For the blood of the Lamb is my ransom. I am free, free, free. For the blood of the Lamb is my ransom. I am free, free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am free, oh hallelujah, praise the Lord, I am free, for the blood, for the blood of the Lamb is my right, I am free, I am, I am free. For the blood of the Lamb is my right. I am free, I am free, you are free. For the blood, for the blood of the Lamb is my right. I am free, free. Praise the Lord, I am free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, I am free. For the blood, for the blood of the Lamb is my right. I am free. I am free. Oh, Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes, it washes white. It 
Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, This morning, worthy are you, God? Worthy is the Lamb. Sing with me. Sing, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. One more time. Sing, worthy are you, God? Worthy, worthy is the
We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you power, we give you all the blessings that you deserve, oh my God. You are worthy to receive all the power, all the glory, all the praise this morning. You are worthy as you are, God. You are worthy, Lamb of God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, God. The beauty of your wholeness and the splendor of your majesty and the magnificence of your presence. We worship you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. of Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. We thank the Lord of all grace who has given us today. Today is a glorious day. It is a special day. It also happens to be the first Sunday of a beautiful month, December. Amen. And the theme for the whole of this month is the glorious joy of God, the glorious joy of God. But this morning, we will be looking at the theme, the glorious joy of God in suffering, the glorious joy of God in suffering. We will be reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 12 to 14, 1 Peter chapter 12, verse number 4 to 13, to 14. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. I'm reading an NIV version. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fairy ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Verse 14. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Amen. 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 So the team is the glorious joy of God in suffering. There is nothing glorious about suffering. Nothing is glorious about suffering. When you are, suff you are suffering, when you are in affliction or you are in trouble, you cannot enjoy it. Amen. In these times, there are various sufferings that the people of God find themselves in. But I want to admonish you this morning that even in times of these adversities and trials and tribulations, I pray this morning that you will still experience the glory of God. 
you will still experience the glorious joy of God. Hallelujah. Elsewhere, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. May the joy of the Lord this morning be your strength. Hallelujah. We have various types of sufferings. We have various types of sufferings. We have physical suffering. In Lamentations chapter 4, verse 1 to 10, the writer of the book of Lamentations said that if gold, if gold can even lose its brilliance, if the fine gold can even become even very bad, then there is a problem. Suffering physically in every aspect of our lives is very excruciating, is very painful. Hallelujah. Not only that, but we also have what you call mental and emotional suffering. In this time that we find ourselves, there are so many emotional torture, so many emotional pain that we find ourselves in. People have lost their jobs. We are being confined. We are not able to do the things that we used to do. It makes us to really go into a lot of mental and emotional pain. So the writer of the book of Psalms, Psalm 54, verse number 4 to 5, he says that my heart is full of sorrow. My heart is full of sorrow. I am afraid of the attack of the terror. Our hearts are full of sorrow. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that as Apostle Paul told the church in Philippi that you should not be anxious for nothing, but through prayers and supplication, make your requests known unto God. For the peace of God that surpasses all understanding should guard your heart and your spirit. I pray that the peace of God will solidify and strengthen your heart this morning. Every emotional torture, every discouragement, every disappointment that you find yourself in, in this time of adversity, I pray that the grace and the peace of God will be your portion this morning. Hallelujah. It's not only physical, mental, or emotional sufferings that we have, but we also have what you call spiritual suffering. Spiritual suffering. In the book of Acts, chapter number 16, verse 18, one point in time, as Apostle Paul was walking. The Bible said that a certain lady, a certain lady who was possessed, a certain lady who was using sorceries, who was using evil powers, this lady, when he saw Paul and his friend Silas moving in the city, the Bible said that this lady began to uh, proclaim, whether it be good news or bad news, yeah, she was proclaiming that these are the servants of God. These are the servants of God. So he came unto them. And the Bible said that Apostle Paul was grieved in the spirit. He was grieved. He was suffering in the spirit. Hallelujah. And then he turned his back and then cast that demon from that evil. Hallelujah. That evil person or that demon possessed person. We don't need demons. We don't need demons to tell us that we are children of God. Hallelujah. We don't need them. Amen. We need the people of God. We need the cloud of witnesses to testify that we are Christian. We are Christian. We should not even be worried because elsewhere in Romans chapter 8, in Romans 8 verse 16, the Bible says that the Spirit of God testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. So Paul was suffering spiritually, and therefore he cast that demon that was in the girl out. Not only that, but elsewhere to when Paul came to Athens, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 16. The Bible said that Paul realized that the whole of the city 
was engulfed with idol worship. Everywhere that he saw, sorry, everywhere that he went, he saw an inscription of an idol all over the place. And when Paul saw all those idols in the city of Athens, the Bible said that he was grieved in the spirit. He suffered in the spirit. Beloved, how can we be happy when iniquities are increasing? How can we be happy when evil is increasing? We are always being uh, tortured or tried in the spirit. Hallelujah. Even in these times. Even in these times. Hallelujah. So it was at, the, at this backdrop, at this backdrop that Apostle Paul, so Apostle Peter also wrote his scriptures. So we want to look at living in the midst of suffering. Living in the midst of suffering. From where our sister read, from where our sister read, in First Peter chapter number 4, verse number 12, all the way to number 14. All the way to number 14. It talks about how the believer should rejoice in suffering. Amen. If you look at the whole of the epistle of Peter, the whole of 1 Peter, you can see the word suffering and eight derivatives. That is whether suffering or suffer or suffered. Suffering, suffer or suffer. So both suffering and eight derivatives. You can see it in that epistle, that is from 1 Peter chapter 1 all the way to chapter 5, 21 times. 21 times. Hallelujah. 21 times. And Peter has a lot to say about suffering. Amen. He has a lot to say about suffering. He has a lot to say about suffering. This Peter, you, uh, you realize that uh, before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, he denied Jesus Christ at that greatest hour when there was a small suffering that he was supposed to go through. So Peter, before, before the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit, before Pentecost, was somebody who was afraid of suffering. Somebody who was very fearful of going through trial. Hallelujah. Was going through trial. Then it is this same Peter who in this part of the scriptures, now he's trying to encourage the believers. Hallelujah. If you look at the background of what we read or the book of uh, First Peter, this was a church which was being established in the Asia Minor, the church in Asia Minor. And during that time, the emperor which was governing that time was Emperor Nero. He was a governor of the Roman Empire. He was a governor of the Roman Empire. And what happened is that a certain strange things happened, and then the city of Rome was burned. Now, when the city of Rome was burned, people became very unhappy towards him. So what they did was that they channeled their unhappiness and what they are going through towards the Christians. So they started oppressing and persecuting the Christians. And even Emperor Nero or Governor Nero, what he did was that he will take a group of Christians and then he will cover them with tar. And then he will set them ablaze on fire to light his garden. So you could see that the believers were going through a lot. They were going through a lot. And they were very worried. Why? Is it because we have accepted Jesus Christ? That is why we are going through these troubles or these excruciating 
pain. Hallelujah. So it was at this background that Paul, who once time denied Jesus Christ, who once time was afraid of suffering, is now encouraging these believers. Hallelujah. Elsewhere, if you look at the book of Luke Gospel, chapter number 22, verse number 31 to 32, the Bible says that Jesus Christ prayed for Peter. And he said that, Simon, Simon, Peter, Peter, the enemy wanted to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you so that when you are strengthened and you are able to stand, you should also encourage others. Hallelujah. So you could see that Peter in 1 Peter is now encouraging the believers based on what they have gone through. So in 1 Peter chapter number 4, verse number 8, Peter told them that in all these sufferings that you are going through, you should still love one another. Hallelujah. And also in verse 9, 1 Peter 4, 9, he says that not only should you love one another, but you should also show a lot of hospitality. You should also show a lot of hospitality. Not only that, even in this pain, in this time of suffering, you should continue to manifest the grace of God. 1 Peter 4, 10. Continue to manifest the grace of God. Not only that, even in this time, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, you must continue to proclaim the good news. To proclaim the good news at any time that you get the opportunity. And above all, in 1 Peter chapter number 4, verse 19, Peter said that because you are still in this world, you are going through the sufferings. And trust yourself to God, who is the faithful one, and you will be able to take care of you. Hallelujah. So in the midst of suffering, in the midst of challenges, Peter encouraged the church at Asia Minor. I pray this morning that may the Lord God Almighty also strengthen you and empower you and cause you to receive the glorious joy of God even in this time. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, let's go to the suffering as a Christian. Suffering as a Christian. Suffering as a Christian. How should a Christian respond to suffering? How should a Christian respond to suffering? Based on what our sister read, I want you to read that one for us again. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Peter 4, 12. How should the Christian, the believer, respond to suffering? Dear friends, Dear friends do not be surprised at the fairy ordeal that has come to you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate. Only the verse 12. Verse 12, only, yeah, only 12. verse 12. So read it again for okay. us. Okay. Mm. Dear friends. Dear friends. Do not be surprised at the fairy ordeal that has come on you to test you, mm -hmm. as though something strange were happening to you. Amen. Amen. So Peter is now telling the church, at Asia Minor, that you should not be surprised. Peter was telling them that they should not be surprised of the suffering that they are going through. Amen. Most times when we are going through suffering, we are a little bit very worried. And then we are surprised that, oh Lord, we have been serving you all this time. We have been doing all this thing. Why are we going through all this pain? Why are we going through all this persecution? Peter told them that they should not be surprised. As I've told you, for those people in their time, they were being set ablaze. They were being killed. They were being tortured. And they were surprised that they have come to receive Jesus Christ and they are going through that. 
And Peter was telling them that you don't need to be surprised. You don't need to be amazed of what is actually happening to you. Hallelujah. And Peter used the word, uh, the, the trial, uh, uh, he used the word, the fairy trial, fairy trial, going through fairy ordeal, fairy ordeal. The fairy means that fire. So this one pray, supposes or pray suggests to us that indeed they were being burned to light the garden of Emperor Nero. And what they are going through, that fairy is like a pain, it's like very painful. They are going through fire. Hallelujah. And Peter is saying that when you are going through fire, you should not even be surprised. Amen. Because when you go through this fire, this fire is going to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Amen. The fire is going to refine you. Amen. You have to understand that the fire that you are going through is going to cause rain even to fall. Uh, last time I heard our chairman saying that as the church has gone through persecution, as a lot of people have died even with this pandemic, in the same way that God is going to revive his church and through the revival that is going to come to church, many will come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, when the fire falls, when we go through the fire, oh, there is also rain. Hallelujah. Elsewhere, when the fire fell, rain came down. Elijah said that I could hear the sound of a heavy rain. And this fairy ordeal, this excruciating pain, when we go through it, it also destroys evil. It destroys evil. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Peter said that when you go through the sufferings, all the sins, you are able to crucify all the sins. So sin is being destroyed. And it also refines you because we know that fire refines, it purifies. So as we are going through the suffering, the suffering makes us better Christians. Hallelujah. So Paul was encouraging them that they should not be amazed. I mean, they should not be amazed. They should not be amazed. You see, elsewhere, during the ministry of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was not only telling the disciples about the suffering that he would go through, but he also prepared the disciples for the suffering that they would also go through for they following him. In John chapter 15, verse 18 to 20, Jesus said that because the world hates me, the, the world will also hate you because you are my followers. For if the world loves me, they will love you also. And the reason why the world don't love you is because you are not of the world. Amen. You are not of the world. So it means that as we follow Jesus, as we come to Jesus, the world is going to hate us. We are going to be hated by the world. We are going to go through persecutions. We are going to go through sufferings. So the suffering and the persecution that we are going through, it is not because we have done anything, but because we are following Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Look at what Apostle Paul himself said in 1 Peter Chapter 1, verse 1. When Apostle Paul was describing the church at Asia Minor, he told them that you are strangers of this world. You are temporal residents. Beloved, we are not from this place. Hallelujah. We are not from this place. We have a better place to go. Hallelujah. And the reason why we are not from this place, that is why the people of this place will not love us. Amen. And therefore, we'll be going through persecutions in their hands. Hallelujah. Not only that, look at what Apostle Paul also said in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse 12. Apostle Paul also was encouraging his son Timothy and said that, Timothy, you know the way I live. You know my prayer. You know what I've gone through. 
But I want to tell you that for so long as that you are living a godly life, for so long as that you are walking with the Lord, you will go through persecution. And that is what becomes very difficult for us. That you are living a holy life and you are still going through suffering. May the Lord God Almighty be very gracious unto us. Hallelujah. So, beloved, we need to understand. We need to understand that because we are aliens, because we are aliens and foreigners of this world, we should not be surprised when we go through suffering. That is why, for me, the pandemic, I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised because I am not from this place. I am from heaven. Hallelujah. So Paul told them, uh, Peter told them, you don't need to be surprised. You don't need to be surprised. You don't need to be amazed. You are serving the Lord and then you are suffering. You are serving the Lord and then you are losing your job. You are serving the Lord and then you are failing your examination. You are serving the Lord and sometimes you are not even getting even a man even to marry you. How do we explain these things with the word of God? But I want to admonish you that Jesus Christ has not only called us just to believe, but he has also called us to suffer with him. But in the suffering, in this excruciating pain, in these trying times, I want to admonish you that your faith is being refined. In these trying times, the Lord God Almighty is purifying you and is making you a better person. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we want to look at the glorious joy. The glorious joy in suffering as a Christian. Look at what the Apostle, Paul, uh, Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter uh, uh, 4, verse 13. Look at uh, what Peter said after we have gone through the suffering. What is going to happen to us? 1 Peter 4, 13. What does he say? 1 Peter 4, 13. 4, 13. Mm -hmm. And I read, But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Amen. Amen. So Peter was saying that the response of the believer or the reaction of the believer towards the sufferings that we are going through, the first one is that we need to rejoice in this suffering. Hallelujah. We need to what? Rejoice in this suffering. How can you rejoice in this suffering? Elsewhere, after Apostle Paul and his friend Silas, after they have cast this demon possessed girl, they have cut that demon out of this demon possessed girl in Act of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 24 to 25. The Bible said that they put them in prison. They put them in prison and they put chains all over them. And the Bible said that in the midnight, look at what they are going through in the midnight. Apostle Paul and Silas, they sang hymns. Sometimes, you see, in Canada here or those of us in the Western world, when you look at the prison that we have here in Canada, you see it's a very beautiful place with a bear. Sometimes you have a television inside. But when we are talking about a typical prison that time, and the one that is elsewhere that I know. All the toilet and everything is inside the place that you sleep. So you'll be defecating on yourself. You'll be urinating on yourself. You, there, uh, uh, when there is uh, uh, hotness, the temperature is very hot, there is no air condition there. And that is the place that you are. It's a very small place and then you are confined. You cannot go anywhere. In the case of Apostle Paul and Silas, they have even been bound them with even chains. So it means that their movement is related to the length of the chains that they are being bound with. So they could not move, they could not go anywhere. So if you are in this pain, what should be your reaction? The Bible said that we should rejoice in suffering. The Bible said that Paul and Silas that night, they began to sing. They sang praises. They worshiped the Lord. 
And when they worshiped the Lord and they sang praises, the Bible said that all of a sudden there was an earthquake and all the place, the chains opened and it fell and the Lord gave them deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, but the Apostle Peter is saying that we need to, it's a privilege for us to suffer for Christ. It's a privilege for us to suffer for Christ. For us to suffer for Christ. It's a privilege. So when you are suffering for Christ, it's what? A privilege. So Apostle Paul, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, he says something very interesting. He said that, Beloved, you have not only been called by Jesus Christ, you have not only been saved by Jesus Christ, but you have also been called to suffer with him. All that Paul is trying to say is that the grace that God gave to us through his son Jesus Christ that led to our salvation is the same grace that he has also given to us for us to suffer. Hallelujah. That was why elsewhere, uh, when he was asking God, oh God, please, can you remove this thorn of the enemy for me? God said that my grace is sufficient unto you. This morning, may the grace of the Lord be sufficient unto you. Hallelujah. So, beloved, we have not only been called just to uh, rejoice and to be happy, but we have also been called to suffer with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look at what happens to the disciples or the apostles in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 41. The Bible says that after the Holy Ghost fell, so many things happened in the church. One of the incidents was the raising of the cripple at the beautiful gate. And then in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, the Bible said that even aprons of Peter and shadows of, of Peter were healing the sick. The Bible said that when uh, uh, the shadows of Peter healed the sick, some of the believers at that time were not happy about it. And they took Peter and his friends into the prison. And the Bible said that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 verse 19. The Bible says that, that night the angel of the Lord entered into that prison. And then he told them that my friend, go out, go and stand outside and then preach. So in the morning, they realized that uh, Peter and the friends are standing outside and then they were preaching. Hallelujah. Beloved, I pray that in this Christmas you will receive an angelic visitation. Hallelujah. Though that even when you are in the prison, may the Lord deliver you. Amen. And then they were very surprised. So they took them again. And then they brought them before the Sahindri. And then they questioned them. So when they questioned, they told them that you don't need to speak about the, the name of this man again. And then one professor called Gamaliel told them that, Beloved, why are you worried about what he has done? A certain man called Tarsus. Tardos. He said that he was blah, 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 blah. He died, and then all his followers, they were gone. Another certain Judas also came, made himself as the Lord, whatever. When he also died, all of them came to an end. But for these people, beloved, if what they are doing is from the Lord, it will stand. But if what they are doing is not from the Lord, it will not stand. But you should be very careful that you do not oppose them or do anything against them. Because if you are not careful and the thing is from God, then you will not be opposing them, but you will be opposing the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that when Gamaliel told the Sahindri about this, the Bible said that the Sahindri, they understood and what they did was that they called uh, Peter and the friends inside and then they said, that, you know something, you don't need to say this thing, talk about this man's name again. So the Bible said they gave them lashes. 
some few lashes, and then they ask them to go. All of them is in the Bible, out of the Apostle, chapter 5, verse 41. So in the 41, the Bible said that when they came out, the Bible said that they were rejoicing. Why were they rejoicing? They were rejoicing because they have suffered for the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that in suffering, it is a privilege that we have suffered for the Lord God Almighty. Amen. We want to bring the message to an end, but I want to talk about something. Apostle, the same Apostle Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10 to 11, he said that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, which is conformed in his death. Ha, the word fellowship there, the word fellowship there that Apostle Paul was talking about, it comes from the Greek word called koinonia. Koinonia means that to have something in common. Something in common. So Apostle Paul is saying that I want to have something in common with the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because it is a privilege to suffer with the Lord God Almighty. Beloved, when we suffer, we receive the reward from the Almighty God. Jesus Christ told them in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 to 12, that you should not be worried when you are being persecuted, when you go through suffering. For great is your reward. Beloved, great is our reward. Hallelujah. Beloved, great is our reward. I said great is your reward. In this time, the Lord God Almighty is going to reward you better. You are going to receive more than you have lost. He will give you double for your trouble. We are crushed every side in these times. But I want to admonish you, the Lord God Almighty is going to restore. May his grace continue to be with us and empower us and give us that joy. Even in this time, we need it. We need the joy of the Lord. May his joy be sufficient unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Purify my heart. Let it be as gold. And precious silver purify our hearts. Let it be as gold, pure gold, refined as fire. to be holy set apart for you Lord we choose to be holy set apart
magnify you, Lord. Thank you for your word, O God, the glorious joy. In suffering, O God. Kaba Shantarababa. Thank you, O God. 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 Let your grace, O God, be abound unto us, O God. As we go through the sufferings, O God. Lift up your hand and touch us, O God. Lift up your hand and touch us, O God. Father, strengthen us. Help us to stand, O God. We say, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of Jesus Christ, for the sake of you, O Lord. Great is our reward. We should rejoice. We should rejoice. Help us rejoice, O Lord. Oh, help us rejoice, O Lord. With one accord with Apostle Paul, we will rejoice and always we will rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lamb of God was slain. Oh, yes, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Lamb of God. Lamb of God. The lamp of God. The lamp was lit. Hallelujah. It's well. It's over. Hallelujah. remembrance of me as often as you take my body and then you drink my blood you should continue to proclaim the death of Jesus until he comes beloved 
the death of Jesus Christ is the suffering that Jesus Christ went through. But after the suffering, there was glory. So Apostle Paul said that, don't you know that the glory of God and the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Jesus Christ could only get this glory after he has gone through the suffering. Hallelujah. So, beloved, he says that we should eat it and drink it and continue to proclaim his death until he comes. But because the body of Jesus Christ is glorious, when we eat and we drink in an unworthy manner, we eat and drink and bring condemnation unto ourselves. So Apostle Paul was admonishing the church at Corinth and said that you need to examine yourselves so that you will not eat and drink and bring condemnation unto yourself. But because of the grace of God, beloved, we will eat and we will drink and we will not bring condemnation to ourselves. But we need to examine ourselves. So in one minute restitution, if we want to Go to the Lord, reconcile anything that will prevent us from eating and drinking and bringing shame unto ourselves. The Lord should take it away so that we will eat and drink and receive the power and the glory of God. May the grace of God be sufficient unto you. Your grace has you. Oh Lord, oh, your grace. Oh, I stand it again. Oh, precious love. Oh, we bow down to you. Oh, precious love. We bow down to you. Your grace. of Jesus Christ, let us eat in remembrance of him. Amen. Christ, let us drink in remembrance of him. Amen. Where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight.
the glory. We magnify you. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. For a privilege time like this, we have time with the Lord. We give the Lord all the glory. Father, we worship you that this morning we have partake in this Lord's Supper. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord God Almighty strengthen you and give you power. May the Lord give you the grace that will cause you to always rejoice. Even in this time, as you have eaten and as you have drunk the blood of Jesus, May the Lord cause his glory to be your portion this morning. Any physical suffering that you find yourself in, any mental and emotional suffering that you are going through, any spiritual suffering that we find ourselves in, may grace be abound unto you this morning. May the Lord cause his glorious joy to be your portion. God richly bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Folks, God bless you so much for worshiping with us. Today is a very special time that we have done with the Lord. And the Bible said that after the eating, they sang praises, they danced. So we are also going to sing praise and we will dance. But we'll do this as we also give our first fruit, our tithes and offerings. So we'll be giving our tithes and offerings. And also, the Bible says that the believers, they continue to proclaim the word of God. They continue to proclaim the good news. So we will also help in the expansion of the good news by bringing our missionary offering. So we'll be giving our missionary offering. We'll also be giving our tithes and offerings. This are the last mission offering for this year. So let the Lord speak to you as you give bountifully to support the mission's work. Those online indicate your tithe and offering and also indicate your missionary offering. And the Lord God Almighty, the God of the faithful, this God will bless you even as you give generously. Amen.
the Lord God Almighty for how far he has brought us. Beloved, the Lord is still on the throne. Amen. The Lord is still working through us to possess the nation. This year, we are going to have a very glorious Christmas convention coming on the 23rd to the 27th. The theme for this year is the glorious gift of God. Jesus Christ, the glorious gift of God to mankind. So don't exempt yourself as we bring in you a very packed, Holy Spirit inspired Christmas convention. So always stay in tune with us, worship with us. The Lord God Almighty will bless you. Until we come again to you next week when we bring the glorious service unto you. May Jehovah God continue to bless you and keep you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. From everlasting, you are God. Oh, to everlasting, you, you are God. Oh, you, you are still there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.